up everyone, this is Cedric and in this video we will talk about Spurs Metrics. So what is Spurs Metrics? Spurs Metrics is the metrics which has a greater number of zero values in comparison to non-zero values. Example, we have here a 4 by 4 matrix where only 6 values are non-zeros and the rest of the value are zero. So as you can see on the table, there are only 1, 5, 9, 8, 3, and 4 non-zero values and the rest are all zeros. So in this video, we have a task to create a program that prints only the non-zero values. So now, let's jump to the program. As you can see, I have already created the program, but if you want to check this program, you can check it at the end of the video on the description below. So as you can see, we have here a 2D array, 6 by 8, 6 is a row, and 8 for the column, and i is row, and j, variable j, is for the column. Now let's try to analyze this program. So, I have here already an example of the program. We have here a outer for loop and an inner for loop. The outer for loop is to control the row. And the inner for loop is to control the column. So we have also here a printf and scanf function. So a printf function is to prompt the user to input an element in our array and scanf function to take the user's input. And this first format specifier is for the row and the second format specifier is for the column. So we put an this right here because we want to know the indexing of our array or where we put our inputs inside on our array so now let's say that the user inputs 0 okay I will just clear these values okay so user input 0 then we take the user's input okay so the index is row 0, column 0. So row 0, column 0. So here is our index. Now we will go back into our inner loop and increment the value of j. j++. j now will become 1. Is 1 less than to 4? True. So now, we'll go back again to our inner loop. I mean to our current f and scan f function to take the user's input. Let's say that user again inputs 0. Then again, we will go to our inner loop and increment the value of j. j++. j becomes 2. Is 2 less than 3? I mean for true. So again, we'll go to our printf and scanf. Take the user's input. And let's say that the user input 3. So again, we'll go inside to our inner loop. And increment the value of j, j++, j becomes 3. Is 3 less than 4? True. So again, we'll take the user's input using a scanf. Then again, we'll go back to our inner loop. J++, J gets incremented, becomes 4. Is 4 less than 4? False. So now, the inner loop will end and we'll go up here to our outer loop. Then I gets incremented i plus plus so i will become 1 is 1 less than 3 true 
So now we we'll go again into our inner loop and set the value of j to 0. So now j will be become equal to 0. Is j less than 4? True. So now we will prompt again the user to input an element in our array and take the user's input using a scanf function. So user inputs value. Then again we will go back to our inner loop j plus plus j gets incremented j becomes one is one less than four true so again we will take the user's input and user's input value zero then go back again to our inner loop j gets incremented j plus plus j becomes two is two less than four true so again prompt the user Take the user's input. Now, we'll go up here to our inner loop again and increment the value of j. j++. So j will become 3. Is 3 less than 4? True. So again, we'll prompt the user and take its input. Then again, go up here into our inner loop, j++, j will become 4. Is 4 less than 4? False. Now, the inner loop will end. And we'll go up here into our outer loop. And i will get incremented. So i++, i will become 2. Is 2 less than 3? True. So again, we'll go into our inner loop so again prompt the user to input value in our array and take its input then again go up here in our inner loop j++ I, oh sorry I forgot we will set the value of j to 0 Okay, now we'll go up here, then increment the value of j, then j will become 1. Is 1 less than 4? True. Then we will take the user's input. Then go up here again. j++, j gets incremented, becomes 2. Is 2 less than 3? I mean 4. True. So again, we will take the user's input. So now, again, we will go up here into our inner loop. J plus plus J gets incremented. J will will become equal to three. Is three less than four? True. So again, prompt the user, take the user's input, user inputs a number, let's just say 7, then go back into our inner loop, j gets incremented, j++, then j will become 4. Is 4 less than 4? False. So now, our loop, our inner loop will end. And we will go up here into our outer loop. Then i gets incremented. i++. plus plus. Now it will become 3. Is 3 less than 3? False. So, now it will end. The pro our program will end. Then this is the final output of this program. Okay, so now let's go back to our program right here and now we'll try to uh, display the array values so here we will just copy this oh by the way we are using a row major which means the, the indexing is from left to right okay so from left to right 
So we are using a row major. So, okay. So array values. So we'll just copy this uh, line of code up here and paste it right here. Then we'll just eliminate this scan f function and replace it with a because we don't want to scan or take a uh, user's input we'll, we will just to display its value the array values so we don't need this scan f function we'll just replace it with the print f uh, format specifier percent d for an integer then the our array and after that we will make a, a new line print f backslash n to print a new line so every loop of this inner for loop it will create a new line then and another print f backslash n to create a space between the array values and our final output of this program now we can see here there is a backslash t this backslash t will create a space in the same line now again we will just copy this code up here and paste it right here then we will make an f condition that says f array values is not equal to zero then we will print its value so meaning it will only print if the value are non-zeros and then as you can see there is also an backslash t it will create an space in the same line then this first format specifier is for the row ri which is the row then second format specifier is for the column j then this third format specifier is for the values or array now let's try to run this program so it says please input elements for array now we'll try to input more zero elements than the non-zero values because that is how sparse metrics so again more zero values than the non-zero values So as you can see, it prints the array values and it creates a new line. So every loop of this inner for loop, it will print a new line. So from here, it will go down here. And from here, it will go here. So yes, it's very clear that also you can see that it only prints the non-zero values for example like one six four seven eight nine two and so on and as you can see it does not print the zero values the index that have zero values for example row three column one it has a zero value so let's try to find row 3 column 1 there is no row 3 column 1 down here and let's try to check this non-zero value row 1 column 3 it has a value 4 let's check row 1 in column 3 so it has a value of 4 
So again, let me create an another example. So I will just close this first output and run again our code. So again, more zero values than the non-zero values. Okay, so as you can see here, there's six rows and eight columns. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight columns. So it does not print the zero values. I am pleased and fortunate to know this sparse metrics method because it is very much useful for computing large scale applications that dense matrices are incapable of handling. Now I already have an idea about it and I know that this knowledge can be useful for my future work or activities. So that's all for my video, hope you learned something new. And have a great day. Bye-bye.